good morning. Happy Monday after Thanksgiving. Did you pack on some pounds? I probably sure, I, I'm pretty sure I did. <laughs> I had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Just me, my sister, we make all the fixings. One of the casserole dishes, the Pyrex, it, you know, if you want to hear that story, you, you should have been in my live yesterday, but long story short, it exploded. Glass went all over the kitchen. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a true crime. Anyway, <laughs> That's cleaned up. We're eating leftovers. I made turkey tetrazzini. Oh, so good. What I didn't make was beef wellington. Now, this is something that 49-year-old Erin Patterson made. She's from Australia. She grew up in Melbourne. Um, not without money. She, you know, financially independent she, as a result of some real estate deals. Her mother uh, passed away from cancer and left her this huge ocean side estate that she sold for $900,000. But, you know, anyway, so she's married to a guy named Simon Patterson. Um, he's an engineer, a civil, he's a civil engineer, but uh, his parents had a local newspaper. And so Simon and his wife, Erin, helped help run this newspaper. She was the editor. He was a photographer. So they had they go on to have a couple of kids. Now at at the time that this occurs, that the crime that I'm going to talk about, it's July of 2023. Aaron decides, you know, by by that time they're already split up. The kids are teenagers, 12 and 14, I believe that's their ages. Anyway, I'm going to, before we get to the luncheon though, let's just back up a little bit. So in, in the spring of 2022, Simon suffers horrible gastrointestinal pain, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. He's hospitalized for 16 days. Uh, Followed by rehabilitation afterwards, he had, they had to put him into an induced coma in order to recover from what they thought was food poisoning. They they never determined what this mysterious illness was. But follow, following this illness, he and his wife decide, we're going to separate. So now they're living separately. But she decides, you know, I really want to get back with him. And so I'm going to have this luncheon. And I'm going to invite my in-laws. So she invites her mother-in-law, Gail Patterson, who's 70, year old, 70, year, 70 years old. She invites Gail's husband, of course. His name is Don Patterson. Then she invites her mother-in-law, Gail's sister. Her name is Heather Wilkinson. And Heather brings her husband, Ian Wilkinson, who is a pastor in this Baptist church that they're all part of. And according to neighbors, it was kind of like, uh, not really an intervention, but they were, she also invited her husband, Simon. Simon cancels at the last minute. So there's all these people at the luncheon. She's at the luncheon. Uh, Aaron is at the luncheon with her mother-in-law, father-in-law, the sister of the mother-in-law, and the other two people. So six people at this luncheon. Now, she sends her two teenagers to the movies. Okay, here, go to the movies. So they don't eat any of what she's serving at this luncheon. So apparently she was going to pitch getting back together with Simon and the parents were going to let her know that they were against it. I don't know. It just whatever. <laughs> I don't know if that happened or not, but she decides she's going to serve beef wellington. Now, this is a traditional English dish that I can say I have never made for lunch or otherwise. Now, to me, a luncheon is, if I'm going to have people over for lunch, I'm going to make some nice sandwiches, chips, hot dogs, hamburgers, barbecue. I'm not making no dang gum beef wellington. I'm telling you what. Well, so let's talk about what beef wellington is. I had to look this up because I've never eaten it. It sounds delicious. Oh my God. So you get 
a filet steak and it's coated with a mushroom paste. You take these mushrooms and you mince them up and you mix them with onions, herbs, black pepper, and you saute them until it's reduced to a paste. And then you roll that paste, you know, put that paste over your a hunk of beef, so to speak. I'm not a chef. <laughs> you can tell. I love to cook, but I'm not a chef. Um, and usually what I make turns out pretty good, but it's totally by accident. Because I also don't taste what I eat, which is another question in this uh, saga. Did she taste what she was? Did you taste the paste? I don't know. So she, uh, so, and that's called duxel, duxel. So you coat it with this duxel mushroom mix and then you can put prosciutto over that to preserve the moisture of the meat and it is covered in a puff pastry what yeah and then it's baked and then it's sliced in portions so she has these people over she she makes she plates everything up first of all i don't plate anything i just put it out there you get what you want and that's it she plates everything but she says each guest chose which plate they wanted, which portion of the beef wellington. I mean, it does sound delicious, doesn't it? So they eat this lunch, and I don't know what conversation happened during lunch, but like I said, Simon, he cancels at the last minute, like, no beef wellington for me, I'm going to go get a hot dog. Um, and the kids are at the theater, you know, chowing down on popcorn. So according to her, Erin Patterson, she did she also ate this beef wellington so this is on a saturday saturday luncheon so sunday comes around and a couple of people are they, they, everybody's ill they, you know they're not feeling too good they're nauseous they're vomiting they've got diarrhea so uh these five people the guests all go to the hospital so by that Friday, Gail and her sister, um, Heather, have died. By the Saturday, Gail's husband, Don, passes away. So three people have died. Did I say five people? Oh, because Simon was invited. Okay, so four people have gone to the hospital. So, yeah, so Gail passes away, Heather passes away the next day. Saturday, a week after they eat the mushrooms, this beef wellington, they uh, he passes away, Don, Gail's husband. And then Ian, Heather's husband, is critically ill. He is in a coma. He's on life support. His liver is failing. Ultimately, he ended up having a liver transplant, spent a couple of months in the hospital. He didn't get discharged until September. So he lived to tell about it, but from what from my research, people who have lived to tell about it, about it say how horrendous this sickness is, and it's caused by death cap mushrooms. Now, there's no they didn't know that when these people went to the hospital, they figured it was food poisoning, and the only reason they figured that out is because they all had lunch at the same place. <laughs> And they probably wouldn't have figured it out uh, had it been done separately because the food poisoning doesn't start exhibiting symptoms until, you know, mushroom poisoning by death trap mushrooms. It doesn't start exhibiting symptoms for six, eight, 12 hours later. By then you probably already had another meal and you're like, what did I eat? You know, I had this beef wellington for lunch and then I went home for dinner and had some soup, you know, what did and then breakfast the next day, and now I'm starting to get sick, and you know, what was it we ate? But they knew that they had all eaten at the same place. Now, Erin claims that she too was sick, and that she went to the hospital, and they started an IV, and they ran some saline into her, kept her overnight, and discharged her the next day. Now, whether that's true or not, I have no idea. But, so police start looking at Erin, and they're like, hmm, Let's talk about how you prepared this dinner or this luncheon. So she talks about she used two kinds of mushrooms, some button mushrooms that she had recently 
picked up at the local supermarket and some uh, dried mushrooms that she uh, had in her cupboard that she had bought months prior to this in a local Asian market, she claims. But I will tell you that death cap mushrooms grow in cool, moist places. She's living in Victoria, which at, these death caps just grow in the wild in Victoria at this in the autumn. So she and she was known to have been a mushroom forager. She had several books in her house about mushrooms. So she's not a novice about mushrooms. So she claims she got these, she, she takes the dried mushrooms and she rehydrates them and then she makes their little paste. And so this is how they determined that it was death cap mushrooms. But she claims that, you know, yes, the kids went to the movies, but the following day they ate the beef wellington after she says she scraped off the mushrooms. Now, first of all, <laughs> You would have to take the paste, take it out of the pastry, the beef out of the pastry, scrape it all off. And once you've cooked the mushroom, once you've cooked this dish, that mushroom paste, the toxins from the mushrooms are going to be in other parts of that dish. It's going to be into the beef, it's going to be in the pastry. Just scraping off the mushrooms isn't going to do anything. Also, you would think, okay, well, she cooked it so that you know, that mushroom toxin would go away. No, 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 it doesn't. Death cap mushroom toxins will survive heat. Yeah. And it doesn't take a whole lot. Like one, they're in the caps of the mushroom. The, the, that's why they're called death caps mushroom, death cap mushrooms. The toxins are in the cap of the mushrooms. And it only takes one, maybe two to kill someone. So you got to figure she put at least eight or 10 of these death cap mushrooms into that beef wellington allegedly now and then she serves it now whether she actually ate the beef wellington we don't know she says she did and then she says she scraped off the mushrooms and they're like well why did you scrape off the mushrooms well because the kids don't like mushrooms well i got to tell you um you know i don't know i i, I have a feeling those kids said mom we'd rather have a hot dog <laughs> we don't want that beef wellington you made yesterday uh, uh Also, she says she got sick the next day. If you've got gotten sick and you and your your family, your loved ones are also sick and in the hospital, hospitalized the next day, why are you feeding and you think it's food poisoning? Why are you giving this dish to your kids? That makes no sense. Right? <laughs> anyway. So she's at the hospital, you know, visiting her loved ones and Simon's there with her, her husband and her kids. And there's a discussion about the meal preparation and what, how, what was in it. And she's talking about these mushrooms and she's talking about the dehydrator that she used. Can you rehydrate in a dehydrator? I don't know. I, I've never had a dehydrator. Well, I did have a dehydrator. I didn't use it much. <laughs> One of those things, one of those gadgets you buy and you just never, never use, it just sits in the cupboard. So she um, she's talking about this dehydrator and her husband said, is that what you use to poison them? He makes that statement. So now she's thinking, oh my God, they're going to think I poisoned these people. I'm going to lose my kids. She said she panicked. She goes home and she throws out the dehydrator. So the police later find the dehydrator at the local dump. She tells the police, she lies to the police and says, oh, I threw that out months ago. No, she didn't. So she has been charged with the murders of her mother-in-law, Gail, her husband, Don, her sister, Heather, and the attempted murder of Ian Wilkinson. Thank God Simon canceled or he'd be dead too. And what was it he, she used with him? Or did she try to poison him when he spent those 16 days in a coma after severe gastrointestinal issues? So she puts out a statement. Well, her lawyers put out a statement. The first time she's interviewed by the police, she has no comment. No comment. So she doesn't even, that's the interview. Because once you say no comment, the, I mean, obviously the interview's over. So her, she gets a lawyer, she lawyers up 
and uh, the lawyer issues a statement that gets leaked. It's, it's a statement for the police, but it gets leaked to the media. And here's what she says in this statement. She says, I am now devastated to think that these mushrooms may have contributed to the illness suffered by my loved ones. I want to repeat that I had absolutely no reason to hurt these people whom I love. And then in that same statement she issues, she talks about the two different stores that she bought this from. And I might add, the mushroom industry is very heavily regulated. Um, in order to, most mushrooms that you're going to buy in a store, no matter what country, pretty much, um, they're grown indoors in a controlled environment. <laughs> they're not foraged out in the local you know wild um and it's and they're inspected for toxins and you know so plus nobody else that went to this asian market or the local supermarket got sick from purchasing mushrooms is that evidence it's circumstantial evidence but it will be used against her i'm sure so from this luncheon She's the only adult that doesn't fall severely ill. So I might add, even had they known this was poisoned by death cap mushrooms, they would not, there's no antidote for it. So what it does is it, uh, the toxins, even before you start showing symptoms, are attacking the liver. And your liver basically dissolves to the point where you, you go into liver failure and then, you know, you start, it just fails and you pass away. You need that liver to get everything, all these other toxic things out of your system. And when it's not there, these toxic things go to your brain. You could end up with encephalopathy. It's not a good thing. So uh, thank God Ian was able to get a liver transplant and survive this. Not only that, but this toxin's already attacking the liver. Then you start to have all these symptoms and you're thinking, oh, okay, maybe I have food poisoning. So, you know, it, if you've ever had food poisoning, it's hell. But you get through it and then you, you come out on the other side and you start feeling better. And that's what happens with this death cap mushroom. You know, you have this horrible thing and then there's what they call this honeymoon phase where you're starting to feel better. And then all of a sudden your liver fails and you just become severely, severely ill. So these people, if they were conscious during all of this period of time after the honeymoon phase, they would have suffered very, very much um, a horrendous, horrendous illness to have passed away from. Now, we could talk about motive, method, opportunity, all that kind of thing, but uh, motive, I, I have no idea, no idea. I'm hoping that, you know, when this trial does occur, that even though there's no cameras going to be in the courtroom, that we have some kind of reporter in that courtroom that's going to give us maybe a daily Reddit story or some kind of daily update about what's happening in this horrendous case. I mean, this case has gotten international, obviously, from, from the United States coverage. Um, it's, it's just a horrible, horrible thing to, to die from. Um, death trap mushroom poisoning. So if you've heard about this case, you want to add your two cents, please do leave a comment. Let me know what you think of the story. And I will continue to keep you updated. She has been arrested as of now. This is uh, November 26th, I believe. Monday, November 26th. Cyber Monday. Yes. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, she's been arrested. I don't think she was able to make bond. She is, I think she remains in custody as of this point. So uh, have a great day, everybody. I'm so glad, you know, um, to, for me, the holiday's continuing because first of all, I have no car, but second of all, it's, we're snowed in. We, I, tr I tried to walk the dog this morning and oh my God, the ice, because the snowfall happened on this Monday, Saturday. Tons of snow on Saturday. So yesterday, it was very cold, but the sun was out. So some of the snow melted into ice 
especially on the street where the cars were trying to drive. So this morning I went out, I'm like, oh my God, I am going to slip and fall and, and break a hip or my neck or, you know, it, I'm no. And plus the dog was like, she's crunching on the ice and her paws are going like this. I'm like, no, no, no. And uh, I said, no, we've got to go back home, sweetheart. <laughs> and of course she was upset with me, but I'm not about falling today. No, I'm not about spending the rest of my uh, year in the hospital. So yeah, we didn't walk. <laughs> Poor thing. So I'm continuing to work on the Yumi Arts. I'm doing a paint along with Color and Chat with Joanna. Guys, if you haven't subscribed to her channel, please do. She's almost to a thousand subscribers. She's doing a, a fantastic giveaway when she reaches a thousand subscribers and she's hysterical she tells the funniest stories so uh, check out her channel color and chat with joanna and um subscribe yeah do her a solid and subscribe yeah <laughs> all right guys have a great monday uh i will not be making any beef wellington anytime soon um it's just too much work mm -mm. no i I can base the turkey, but don't ask me to put together a meal like that. Uh -uh. I'll see you guys later. Bye.